What's up guys, it's Akrakoon back with another video and in this video I'm going to be talking about this computer that I found on the side of the road. This computer is an Acer Aspire X. This computer I found on the side of the road and it was a wet day, so I wasn't expecting much of this computer. I was expecting it not to work and maybe to salvage the RAM from it because it advertised 16 gigabytes of RAM on the case. So I took it home and for starters, what I did was I plugged in a different power supply because if a power supply has water in it, it can be very, very dangerous. So I decided to try it with a different power supply and everything worked fine. It booted up perfectly fine. Uh, I didn't have a hard drive installed sadly, it didn't have that 2 terabyte hard drive but that didn't bother me, it still booted, it posted on screen. So then I kind of thought like is it even worth um, recasing it and putting a big power supply? So I'm like may as well just risk it and try it with the power supply that it has. So I did and I have that footage there. I tried it out and yeah it actually works perfectly fine and it posted and everything and then I put in an SSD into the computer and it already had Windows installed so I was hoping it would boot up on that but since it's a pre-built machine by Acer they have their own restrictions and stuff that it can't boot to just like any Windows or whatever you have to install it freshly onto that computer and so I was a bit confused because the SSD wasn't coming up in the BIOS but it turns out it only comes up if there's a boot operating system that it can boot up on there, which I found out later. But anyway, I put in the Windows install disk just to see if that would work, if I could maybe see the hard drive uh, pop up in the Windows install. And yes, it was there. And all I had to do was delete all the partitions on the SSD and then easily install the Windows onto the SSD. After I did that, then I hopped in Windows, had a look at Task Manager, and it turns out this CPU is only dual core, not quad core like it advertises on the case. And even in the BIOS, it said core count and it said four. And so I was very confused, but after I searched it up on Google, it turns out, yes, it's only dual core and that it's just advertising that it's quad core because it's hyper threaded. So it's a two core, four threaded, 3.4 gigahertz processor, which boosts to four gigahertz. So that high frequency is actually really nice. And I'm happy that it boosts to such a high frequency because that does make it open up apps really fast. But I am kind of disappointed that it's not quad core because it's not going to be a great video editing machine at all. But anyway, now that we know that it works and everything, let me list the rest of the spec. So you also get a little graphics card in this machine, which I found really cool. This is probably one of the main reasons why I wanted to pick up this machine because I saw that I had an AMD 7870 HD graphics card with two gigabytes of VRAM, which is like not a very good graphics card in these days, but it is like a decent graphics card to just throw in a system instead of having integrated graphics. So I was happy that it has that in there and that's working. And then of course it has 16 gigabytes of RAM and it has an optical drive and like SD card and CF Express slot on the front. So that's pretty useful. And then of course, a fair few USB 3 ports. So when I turned up this machine, I did notice that it's it had a very loud graphics card fan. It sounded extremely loud and like a little bit buzzy because it's a very small fan. It was quite a high frequency sound and it was quite annoying. So what I did was I took out the graphics card as you can see in the footage now and I took off the cooler. It had four screws on the back, simply took those off, which took off the whole entire heatsink and everything. And you can see how crusty that thermal paste is. It clearly hasn't been changed the whole time that it's been uh, running because it's a pre-built and who would have ever actually think of changing thermal paste. But anyway, it's very crusty and in horrible condition. So, so I simply put some new thermal paste on there and then I pulled apart the cooler and took all the dust out of there. And you can see there's a heap of dust in that heat sink, which is stopping the fan from actually flowing through the heat sink and cooling the whole thing down. So after I did all that, dusted it, took out all the dust, put all the parts back together, I put it back in the machine, and then I headed over to the CPU fan because I noticed that was very dusty as well. And I thought I may as well just give the whole system a nice uh, dusting over just to make it fresh since I'm now the owner of it. So I started off by taking off the whole entire heatsink to have a look at the thermal paste on the CPU. And to my surprise, the whole entire CPU came out of its socket. Thankfully, none of the pins came out, but that could have been, um, that could have been the end of the system if, or if the pins were damaged. But thankfully, they weren't. And when I took out the, the CPU, you can really see it was stuck onto the heatsink really hard. So I had to use a screwdriver and pry it out and then I put it back in its socket and you can see how horrible the thermal paste is on that CPU. It was absolutely horrible, very crusty. Uh, yeah, it looked horrible. So I replaced that as well. And then I took off the fan off the heatsink as well and took all the dust out of that, cleaned everything up nicely. And uh, 
As you can see now, this whole system is very, very clean and it's a great looking system on the inside. After I did all that, I decided to put in a SSD and a hard drive combo instead of having the DVD drive in there because I'm never going to use that anyway. So I put the SSD, I actually zip tied the SSD because there was no other place to put it and I zip tied it to the place where the DVD drive is. And after I did that, then I put in the hard drive, only a 500 gigabyte one because I lost one of my one terabyte ones which I was going to put in there. And once I've done all that, then this is pretty much the finished system. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, an AMD A10 5700 with only two cores and four threads, and then an AMD 7670 HD with two gigabytes of VRAM. So how did this system actually hold up in 2020? So this system is pretty decent, I'd say. It's a good system for browsing the web and doing some light, very, very light video editing. I mean, it can handle some vid light video editing, but like I wouldn't recommend it for video editing because of only the two cores. Although I do like the fact that the frequency can boost all the way up to 4 gigahertz when it needs to. So opening up applications is very snappy on this machine. And just general web browsing is really fast because it opens up the web pages very fast due to that high frequency. But I do feel kind of scammed that on the box it says four cores, well it says quad core. And it's clearly not a quad core, it's, it's four threaded. Yeah, it's not that good. Like the Cinebench R23 score on this thing is really, really bad. It's like 1500. It's a pretty horrible score and it's not very good for 2020, but 16 gigabytes of RAM, that's pretty adequate. Like that's good for these systems these days. Uh, that'll definitely handle anything. You'll have plenty of Chrome tabs open, hopefully. And the graphics card is also pretty good. It's not gonna be able to play many games or anything, but it is better than having integrated graphics. So that is like a nice upgrade. And anyway, I'm, I'm really happy that how small this machine is and it still packs a decent punch. So it's a nice little machine that could be used as a server or something like that. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, drop a like on the video. If you didn't, drop a dislike on the video. Remember to subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next video.